Hi, welcome to One Word Today. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue unpacking some Chinese expressions that talks about to, talks about the lingo of today's technology. <laughs> okay, um, today we're going to talk about 可视化. 可视化. It's three character, and you can see it's irregular because most of the translation of contemporary technical terms are put in two or four, so it's even number. This one is odd, and because the the thing is describing is in English kind of, uh, okay, you, you will see what I mean. 可视化. From just the meaning of each character. Han si abo. Then can you make sense of what what be the English meaning? It means visualizable. It means something you can represent it in a visual way to understand. So this is 可视化. And because it's a visualizable, right? So this able thing becomes that third, that odd number over there. Okay, cool. Uh, we have this divine decoder function. Uh, which is the designated person who is supposedly in a Western, we call it oracle, right? somebody who can read uh, the divine's intention, interpret it for the people on earth. So this horizontal line is the skyline. When, I mean, Chinese is in within this frame, right? So we're supposed to express everything between heaven and earth in this frame. And if a horizontal line, is hovering on top of the frame. So most likely just by the position of it, it means the sky, the visible limit of our human world. And the sky, um, as in the West, that you know, heavenly direction represent nature, represent environment, represent something beyond human control. And it's not designed by us, for us, it's we just, you know, accidentally existing in this world and we interact with this environment. So that's all that one horizontal line is about. And this kind of a curvature <laughs> represent a breath, human breath from our lungs. So we're kind of having our air sending upward. It's almost like a direct phone line. <laughs> if we use today's technology to describe, it's like you have a direct conversation with the heavenly divinity. Okay, then this is the mouse symbol, which I call it a smiley face kind of mouse uh, with the corners tilted upward. Uh, and this mouse symbol uh, represents somebody who's speaking, who's talking, human to human. So if this breath is kind of, we're trying to pray to the sky, this heaven, and then the speaking is, okay, after sending the message, we receive the message. I mean, by we, I mean the divine decoder person who talk to have this direct conversational line with this heavenly you know, intention, and then, pass down the supposedly pass the intention or plan or instruction from the higher up. So the speaking sign in there, this communication, two-way communication, then convert it to represent um, somebody who got the divine blessing or permission to do something. And I mean, who is actually in a position to say you can do something or cannot do something? Who gives? The permission. So in human society, lots of times it's our own permission for us to do something, right? Um, but uh, many other occasions, probably it's the divine, uh, what we interpret as the inter uh, intention of whether we have the permission to do something. So then that becomes simply can in the English word. Okay, sure. This is human C. This symbol is the eyeball symbol. It's kind of verticalized because um, in <clears throat> Chinese, you see the, the, even if it's a frame, it's a 2D frame, it got a proportion. It's taller rather than wider, right? 
therefore horizontal space is like more horizontal space um i i really take it okay so it's a re re rectangle right and this rectangle has a narrower width than length so that means this horizontal direction here this space is more limited than this direction right so when we have an eyeball technically a physical representation of the world of our eyeball would be something look like that right this is a human eyeball in its correct human orientation um but because this horizontal space is so precious language creators sometimes stack it up kind of 100 no 90 degree rotation of this eyeball make it a vertical verticalization and it's still the same thing it's just rotate by 90 degree and that way it saves this horizontal space okay eyeball and here below it is this two leg standing being so this is a two leg standing being that's a human figure this one and here one is put underneath some other icons it was turned into this kind of almost like r shape thing with a little staff on the top to mean it's a it's a human and then it's sitting on top of the eye so i attached to the human icon together it means human c to in today's lingo when we say human c actually it means not only we um neurotically get the signals from the light reflected on objects and physically see something but we have our layering of filters our own past experience that we added to interpret what we see so this interpretation this human attachment to the eyeball is not like a camera it's not a objective see everybody see the world through their own eyes through their own filters and biases and their perspectives right therefore it's a human see it's not camera see <laughs> okay so um this human see give you all that sense of it's from a certain person's point of view okay now the left three vertical lines two horizontal lines my interpretation is this is kind of like cool meaning this is a conversation with the divinity and this is somebody trying to decode the intention of the divinity two horizontal lines simply means heaven and earth or the spatial boundary of human existence between heaven and earth and then two vertical three vertical lines means past present future so we have both the spatial and the temporal sense of existence and that divine decoder person supposed to tell us you know forecast uh to show us when things are going to happen right so give pin down the space and the time things are going to happen and that's the the function of this fortune talent or this you know oracle role in the society and contemporary chinese combine this divine intention decoder right divine decoder with human c trying to give it a sense of not only we see through our own eyes limited by our humanly earthly existence we also pair it with the sense of forecasting this sense of temporal and spatial boundaries that we humans operate so that gives you the the ultimate <laughs> boundary of our existence. So that C is, I would say, probably more not only self-aware but also spatially, temporally aware, aware of if we are dot in the long stream of history, we kind of be aware of this temporal spatial limit of our own existence. So that's the kind of C. Okay, I try to pack in a lot and experience, I mean, explain what that is. But in contemporary Chinese, when we see shi, basically it's a vision. It's what you can see. We don't really go any deeper than that. But actually our own C have layers, layers, our personal 
and also our probably divine connected bigger than our own existence kind of see. Okay, but human figure on the left side and the right side is human figure rotated 90 degree. Okay, so let me draw it out. So this is the human figure in its correct order. So basically the right side is longer and wrap over the left kind of looking like that. And now if it's flip, um, a mirror image flip would be the left side is longer than the right and wrap over the right one, right? So that's like a direct flipping of that. Now it's a 90 degree on the right side. So this thing got, okay, this way. <laughs> and then kind of like that. Now, because it's rotated 90 degree that way, it got extended upward, downward, right? Then it becomes like, okay, is that a human or non-human? That's Chinese language way to express the fourth dimension. We are using this 2D frame, this two dimensional space, trying to capture the four dimensional existence. Four dimensional because it, this flipping and the rotation signifies human change over time. So it's no longer its original human setup, something changed. It keeps the structure the same, but it, it got flipped and got rotated. So if in contemporary um, lingo, we would say that person, that person pivoted, it's no longer in the same direction as its original setup, right? So would you say it's the same person or it's a different person now? So by that flipping and the rotating, Chinese use this steel, like a freeze frame, frozen frame to express the change over time. So that's, it's 2D to capture the 4D um, effort. To me, that's, that's amazing that the language creators find a solution to express change. So this change then means convert and um, it means transform something into something. So it's almost like a function, right? It's a function of X, right? X comes in and then something else comes out, but its input is X. And in this context, I translate it as able, that actually came from this change, from this transformation. So 可视化 means something who originally couldn't be seen, couldn't be visualized. And then you enable it, convert it through this function. So something in, and you do this transformation, you enabled the visualization. This can see something originally cannot be seen. Now it can see or can be seen. Okay, 可视化 simply means visualizable. I translate it as visualizable. So something visualizable. Um, Visualization probably is a, I mean, I work currently in business in uh, intelligence. Visualization is part of the work, uh, if not the main part. So um, trying to make your data dry numbers, visualizable, that's my daily operation. <laughs> and um, then recently I came across gee, what's the book name? Uh, a book talks about the universe. And then the books talk about how the classroom, the map kind of shown on the top frame here, you know, the planetary system in solar system. And you can see, okay, scales, this looks like that. But there's one thing that's wrong or misrepresented, which is the spatial sense between these planets. It's not like that. Nothing looks like this close and lined up like that, right? So spatial sense, this is a visualization, but it's out of proportion. It's significantly out of proportion versus this, I got it from NASA and it shows the live image of where things are fallen, right? Every, every star, every planet uh, got its own orbit. And you, you cannot see Earth, right? That's because Earth is within that blue 
or greenish circle thing. So in the very bright spot over there, that's supposed to be the sun. And super, super close. Earth, in this representation, it looks, okay, distance, you can visualize, you can see the Earth over there. Over here, when you try to see all the way from the perspective only to Neptune, you cannot see Earth because it's that far. So the visualization we're talking about here, even solar system, where everybody in their brain have these stars, I mean, these planets line up and we know where the third planet out. Um, at least what I had in mind when I was taking the um, you know, space science class, it's totally different. <laughs> like it was warped because this is the kind of visualization that can be put onto the same frame versus this. Like here, the Earth disappeared from here because it's too far away. And if you want to see all the planets, you have Neptune here, go further, further in. The Earth is a tiny, tiny invisible dot over there. That's the right proportion that is hard to be visualizable because then you miss the first three stars. The first one you got, okay, you got a sun marked out over there. The first one got a Jupiter. You miss a whole lot of things in the middle. But this is the right um, proportion. But it's not the right visualization for humans to understand, for students, for young kids to see. And that is put me into thinking about, okay, probably a lot of things actually are not visualizable. Imagine the spatial sense of just the solar system, not even the universe. It's through the numbers, it's hard to imagine, but if we put things, try to put things in one frame, try to put things in proportion, and then it's really not visualizable because simply because it's, it's beyond our visibility over there. All right, so that's my thinking about uh, this visualizable. We really have a limit. Um, but good thing is we have imagination. Even if we cannot see it, we can kind of imagine it and we can quantify things and can put it into mathematical terms. Uh, but still, I mean, visualization is important and to make something visualizable is good, but we need to put that um, astra <laughs> over there meaning it's it's out of proportion sometimes. Some things simply cannot be visualized. All right, uh, thank you for your time. See you another day.